Hi guys, welcome to uh, my first video on the channel. So um, we're going to start straight into it. Uh, no messing around. We're using the Hopcat 65 liters, and we're just doing a 23 liter batch today. Um, it's one that I've called Larkin's Legacy, and um, basically it's going to be a grapefruit IPA. So we're nearly. We're at 63 degrees now, we're nearly up to, to the, the correct mashing temperature. So we have all the grain just crushed. I'll put up the recipe underneath the, uh, the description for the video. We have the hop cat nearly up to temperature. Um, and I'll just add my additions now. So I'll be back to you in a minute. Okay, now just after overshooting the temperature slightly, but that's fine, it'll come back down in a second. I'll put on the pump just to recirculate the um, water additions. And I'm gonna get the grain ready now to add in. Um, I'll be honest, it's absolutely roasting today, so what I'll probably do is take off the jacket because I find that it can, uh, on hot days, I might put it on again later on, but at the moment it's too hot to have it on, so I'll be back to you in a moment. Now, something you may not see people do too often with the all-in-one brewers is using a bag as well. Now, I've started using it in the last year, so I used to have the Bulldog 30 litre, and now we've got the Hopcat 65. I use the bag two reasons. I find that the efficiency is much better. Um, so, for example, when I wasn't using the bag, my efficiency was kind of around 75, 78 ish. With the bag, I was getting 82 every single time. Um, so, personal choice, I prefer to use it, but also it's a lot easier than for cleaning up. The only thing I've noticed today is I have a slight rip. Now, that's the first time that I have ripped one of these bags. So, this is my second bag in probably three years. Um, first time I've ripped one, so look, oh, I'm. I'm hoping it'll survive the brew because it's above the grain. But look, if it does rip, it's not the end of the world. I still have a, a basket base underneath this. So we should be good to go. Now, the approach that I follow is I simply just dump it in, give it a good old mix. Um, seems to work well for me. The last two brews I've had and um, one of them was at 80, 88% efficiency and the other one was at 91. Now again, I know efficiency isn't everything, but look, the higher the better in my eyes. This is the approach I've been using. It's always worked. So I'll just drop it straight in. And remove this. And then I'll just give it a good mix. Now, so... Once I've everything mixed nice and well, so there's no kind of dry bits. Um, it stirred for a good 5-10 minutes to be honest with you. I didn't add in this cover. Now, it's not doing a massive amount, but I like to use it to disperse where the water goes. So I kind of knock it down a bit. Turn on the pump. No. Just turn down the pump a bit. And we're going to go now. Um, I'll put on the lid. I'll just leave a work way then. No, so we've the mesh on. Um, being honest with you, my approach with the mash is I tend to go for quite a long one, 90 minutes to two hours usually. I just find it get better results. Um, and you can never really mash for, for too long. But with the with the all-in-one brewers, they tend to keep the heat at quite a quite a good um accuracy. Now excuse me, today is absolutely roasting. It's geez, what's the heat now at the moment? 16 degrees. But inside in the shed it gets quite hot as you can imagine. Um, so I suppose some of the reason behind the, the channel, first of all, is 
my son. So we ha I had a son uh, a month ago, a month ago today, which is why I'm brewing today. His name is Larkin, which is why this brew is called Larkin's Legacy. So uh, hopefully it turns out well. I'm confident it will, but we'll uh, we'll wait and see. But um, the name of the channel then, Bad Baby Brewing. Hence the baby, just something uh, like a badass baby. But uh, no, looking forward to it now. Hopefully we'll get more videos to come. Um, I'll try and give some of the tips and tricks of what I do. Doesn't doesn't necessarily mean it's always right. It's just what I do and what I find to work. Um, so here we go. So just after taking my pH reading, 5.2. As I said online, it was saying 5.2. Nine or something like that, so there's a chance when that gets up to kind of room temperature, it might jump up to 5.3. But uh, again, that's the, the number I was looking for, so I'm happy with that. I'll give it a, a few minutes just to stabilize and I'll, I'll check again. Okay, so um, apologies for the, the lack of updates. So I mixed it a couple of times. Basically, what I did was a two hour mash, mixed it a few times in the middle. Um, I did a mash out for 15 minutes at 76 degrees, sorry, 75.6 degrees. That's now literally just finished. And my sparging water, that's, there's my sparging water there now. Uh, so we're just on time. So I'll just turn that off. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do, the usual, lift um, the grain out of the, the, the brewer and just uh, sparge. So I'll show you how I do it, very basic, but I'll give you an idea there now just before I sparge it just to give you an idea of some of the benefits of the bag like that's absolutely crystal clear so it works well for the mesh you know very clear now so for this point I basically lift the I suppose the, the sparging plate or the mesh plate whatever you want to call it I lift it up to the top and the bag itself kind of holds it for me. So a lot of the time you'd have a, a pipe here because I'm using the bag, obviously I don't need a pipe or I can't use one. So I lift it up and the bag itself kind of holds it even as I'm sparging. And um, something else that I do, I set the temperature to 95 or 90, somewhere high enough without it being boiling. And the whole point is just so that once my sparging is done, it saved me a bit of time and away we go. So look. If I'm doing quite a large batch, I usually hook up a pump to my sparger here. So like the Bulldog sparger, I'll hook up a pump. Because this is only going to be kind of 14 litres, I'll, uh, I'll just do it by jug. And look, just for the sake of it, when I'm pouring it, I'll just do a small bit. Pure and simple. Around we go, nice and slow. Right, if I if I any bits here, I try and just wash them down into it. But I know some people like to, to dump it in. Again, from kind of videos I've seen and techniques I've seen, the slower the better seems to do the trick. And again, the bag will help filter it out slowly. And there's also another um, basket base here on this as well. Now, so we've just reached boiling. The uh, air control system for the boil. Just to blow the steam out the door. So my boil is just starting. So first top edition going in. That's uh Hallard How B. Um again I post up the, the full recipe underneath the video so don't panic about that. But uh, yeah, 60 minutes on. Going in next is the peel from four grapefruits and also the juice and half a teaspoon of yeast nutrient. All right, so um, I left out a few bits, but uh, hopefully you uh, have a fair idea what the, the usual steps are. Um, but no, I did a whirlpool. I'm currently cooling it down after the whirlpool. I have my fermenter pocket here, ready to go. And I'm using USO5 yeast. But uh, no, it was a successful brew day now, to be honest. I'm um, curious to see what my, uh, my what numbers I hit. I'll, um, I'll do another clip in a second with those. But I uh, know, all, all good now so far. It's getting a bit, a bit late here now at the moment. So I've got my, my plug-in bulb, which does the trick. But uh, cool, right, I'll keep you hosted.
Now, so we're uh, back for the taste test. So this is Larkin's Legacy. As I said, it's named after my son. He's two months old today. So I brewed it when he was one month old and he is two months old today. I've had a few of these now throughout the last week or two. Pretty decent, very happy with them. So, like, I'm not big on the whole smelling side of things, but if I do smell that, I can get the grapefruit. I'll be honest, that's about all I can get. I'm not the, the best when it comes to smelling and detecting what's inside in the drink, but I can definitely tell there's grapefruit in it. Now, I compared this during the week with a Elvis juice brewed by Brewdog, but I also compared it with the um, uh, Franciscan Well Chieftain IPA. Two completely different um, smells of grapefruit. Both beers very high in grapefruit, but they were just completely different in themselves, but also in comparison to Larkin's Legacy. So as you see, Larkin's Legacy holds a fantastic head, beautiful smell, Lovely colour. Now, I love a beer you can't see through. So there's no Irish moss, there's nothing at all, no profanity, there's nothing at all that will clear this out. As you'll see, you can't see through that. But the smell is juicy. It's really citrusy, it's fantastic. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's... It's lovely. So I've had it in the keg going on nearly two weeks. And I've tried it every couple of days. Now, to be honest with you, it tasted okay the whole time, but it tasted very young. About two to three days ago, it changed and it was matured it was it was really it was beautiful it was really flavorsome uh one point i want to call out is it's it's very full-on mouthfeel wise it's um you know you, you you really feel it if you're drinking it but the reason for that i think is my hot cat depending on the temperature outside excuse me depending on the temperature outside if it's a hot day once it hits 100 degrees, it'll boil. If it's not so much a hot day, um, it might, you know, it'll be really 99 degrees, but it won't necessarily boil, or it might be 99 and a half, and just, it, it just won't kick into a boil. Um, so what I've, what I've started doing is, once I get to the boil, I set it maybe 2 or 3 degrees below, um, and then I find that obviously, you know, the hot cat is constantly trying to hit that higher power and then, or higher heat, I should say, and then it'll boil constantly, no, no problems at all. Um, I did that to brew before this, but I completely forgot to amend it and fix it. So it just meant that my mash, instead of being 66.7, it was kind of closer to 69. Now, not a massive issue, just meant it was more of a mouthfeel, but it also meant my final gravity, instead of being 1012, which this brew was going to be, it was 1015. Not a big difference. Just meant it a little bit sweeter, uh, more mouthfeel. Would I change it in the future? I'd definitely try it. I, I'd like to see what it would turn out at, at the lower gravity in comparison, but overall, no, nah, it, 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 I'm very happy with the beer. Holds a head, lovely lacy head, as you'll see. Colour is fantastic. Every light that you get, it changes colour. You know, um, it, it really, really is a, a, it's a nice beer. It does need the two weeks to condition, 100%. If you brew this following the recipe I've given you, do not drink it until two weeks have passed. I, I, you'll be wasting your time. I've tried it a few times. It's not worth it. But um, no, overall, fantastic beer. So thanks very much, everyone, for following. As I said, this is my first kind of proper video. Um, I'm planning to keep them going after this. Thanks very much. See you next time.